An open Good Friday 2021 letter to the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Children with disabilities being depicted as monstrous children. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, tear down the brand. When you give a banquet, make it your habit to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind. Then you will be blessed because they can't repay you and you will be repaid when the righteous are resurrected. His Holiness, Pope Francis, Apostolic Nuncio to Great Britain, 39 X Leston Square, London, SW1V 1BX. Attention, Bishops Conference UK. Dear Holy Father Pope Francis, I write to you as your child on behalf of thousands of disabled children in the United Kingdom and perhaps all over the world. The reason being that the Catholic Church which I am a part of and you are the head of is a key player in the school sector in the UK where the issue exists. These children I am writing on behalf are disabled children and can attend mainstream schools there are part of the weakest and vulnerable members of society. However, the Catholic school system in the UK acts so viciously against them. I have sufficient evidence to support my position. A brief background. Disabled children as monstrous children. Society's portrayal of disabled children as monstrous is historical and well documented. Montaigne 1580 Evans 2004 etc. Such portrayal of children with disabilities as monstrous sustains their dehumanisation and the discrimination they regularly suffer. It is against the pro-life philosophy and could inform parents' decision to terminate a pregnancy that is not going well, rather than have the child rejected by a Catholic school later in life. It is ungodly and evil, it violates the humanity of disabled children and people. It should not happen in any Catholic school. When we learn together, we learn to live together. The Present Times Dear Holy Father, I can confidently report to you that not much has changed over the years since the Disability Discrimination Act came into being in 1994 and replaced in 2010. The key change that has occurred is a change from acting as anyone would consider appropriate to meeting minimum standards. Nicely window dressed through tick box practices in order not to be seen to be breaking the law. As the head of the Catholic Church, Catholic parents who have children with disabilities in mainstream schools or wish their children to attend mainstream Catholic schools can be surveyed directly to obtain these facts directly from them. You have a channel to hear directly from them and confirm my views. Issue of resources and competence. Some school head teachers, including Catholic schools, would readily raise the issue of lack of resources and competence to support children with disabilities whose parents desire mainstream Catholic education for. They try to make matters appear more complicated than they are partly pointing to lack of resources and competence. Resources and competence are available in the market and I am raising this issue almost 30 years after the Disability Discrimination Act. Schools are agents of the local authorities and the Catholic Church in the case of Catholic schools and do not have the final say on resources. The local authorities, not the schools, have absolute obligation by UK law to make these schools suitable for every child some head teachers would not consult the local authorities for support before declining to offer disabled children admission based on lack of resources and competence. In some cases, the local authorities are happy to provide resources, but the Catholic schools will refuse. Therefore, the posturing of the schools are mere huddles, bearing in mind that they independently run their institutions and admission procedures. In my experience, the local authority was happy to provide resources which had to be taken elsewhere. Therefore, the issue here is that many Catholic schools managers 
would not work with Catholic parents who wish to have their children with disabilities educated in mainstream Catholic schools. They would not want to seek appropriate support from the local authorities and include our children with disabilities in mainstream Catholic schools. Rather, they take steps to point us in the direction of the exit door to the non-Catholic schools while blaming everything on the lack of resources and competence. This is almost 30 years after the Disability Discrimination Act. Instructively, if a parent obtains a tribunal decision against the school, these excuses of lack of resources and competence simply vanish. Discriminatory budgeting. While it is easy to point out a lack of or limited resources as excuse, high performing Catholic schools market themselves annually during open days as being superbly resourced and having high achievers to children without disabilities. This is the clearest pointer to the sustained nature of discriminatory budgeting against children with special and additional needs for almost 30 years. However, the consequence of this inherently discriminatory budgeting practice is explained away on the grounds of lack of resources. No manager has sufficient resources. Excellent managers are those who maximise the limited resource to achieve the greatest outcomes that benefit those they are supposed to provide services for. In this context, it includes the weakest and most vulnerable members of the society, children with special and additional needs. While disabled children are expected to live in homes that love and accept them and practice the inclusion model below, many schools, including Catholic schools, practice the other models. As a professional, I am aware that there are many motivations which include schools, league table positions, performance rewards and career progression. Therefore, rather than managers doing what is in the disabled children's best interest, interest of the larger community, as well as things that are consistent with Christian values, they do what ticks inclusion boxes, pursuant to other interests, which includes the brand reputation of Catholic schools. Dear Holy Father, Psalm 13913 says, For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's room. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know this very well. These kind of words do not exclude disabled children. Therefore, why do Catholic schools that should embody such values treat children with disabilities with dressed up scorn rather than lead the way in Christ-oriented, inclusive practices. Deuteronomy 27.18 says, Cursed is anyone who leads a blind person astray on the road, and all the people will reply, Amen. Leviticus 19.14 says, Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God, I am the Lord. Why should Catholic schools become stumbling blocks to the weakest and most vulnerable members of society, disabled children? Why should Catholic parents spend time, money and resources going to the tribunals to attempt to affirm their disabled children's right to attend Catholic schools? In Matthew 25 40, Jesus Christ reminds us that whatever we do to the least of his brothers, that we do unto him. Matthew 11:28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. While Catholic schools add to the burden of some parents and their children with disabilities. The problem is that Catholic mainstream schools would not work with Catholic parents to obtain resources from funding bodies and admit Catholic children with special and additional needs. Such resources and competences would be permanently domiciled in the schools for the wider benefit of the entire local community. And where the parents enforce their rights to the mainstream education, rather that work towards the children's inclusions as modelled below, some Catholic school managers would find ways to internally isolate the children with disabilities through internal exclusion or separation. Such practices hurt the body of Christ. Dear Holy Father, I appeal to you to tear down the brand and save the body of Christ from the violation it suffers from Catholic schools. 
solutions. Research found that schools that pursue improvement by becoming more inclusive produce better academic results than others, Ainsgill and Caesar, 2006, and that the highest performing educationally systems in the world are those that are more inclusive, OECD, 2012. Catholic schools should be leading the way by example through the following. 1. Create Christian orientated inclusion code of practice for Catholic schools, i.e. inclusion practices that are consistent, not just the man-made laws, but with Christian values. This should be the standard practice in all Catholic schools, a golden standard. 2. Set a transition period of 3-5 to five years i.e. about 30 years after the Disability Discrimination Act for all Catholic schools in the UK to create a non-discriminatory admission environment for all Catholic children whose parents wish them to access mainstream education. About 30 years after the Disability Discrimination Act is more than sufficient time to rationalise any good intention to have acquired resources and competences necessary for admission of children with special and additional needs in the UK. This is already the practice in less successful economics all over the world. My personal experience is that the local authorities are more than happy to provide resources but many Catholic school managers are resistant. Three. Ban any school under the church from denying Catholic children with disabilities who their parents believe are capable of mainstream education from denying such children admission. This should take effect after the period set out to enable acquisition of resources and competences. 4. Set Christian oriented inclusion values and practices as a major criterion for recruitment of head teachers, teachers and every other employee into the Catholic schools. Make Christian oriented inclusion a key element of continuous professional development received by Catholic school staff. 5. Change existing practice models in Catholic schools to the genuine Christian oriented inclusion model developed to reflect that which research has identified as the most beneficial for children with disabilities. European Agency of Special Needs and Inclusive Education 2018, Flexa et al. 2011, Coyle 2012, Goronik and Bruder 2016. The right model has children with disabilities in red colour, evenly mixed with other children without disabilities in green colour, i.e. the second lower circle in the right column. The other models merely tick the box. Six, a combination of the school and parents of the children with disabilities should monitor the children's inclusion rather than parents who are merely interested in special needs children. The irony of this matter. Dear Holy Father, you may hear all sorts of excuses why this isolationist, ungodly and anti-Christian value I have raised is predominant in Catholic schools in the UK. Some managers will make it seem as if there is either no solution, no resources or that the solutions are too complex. Unfortunately, for these flawed arguments against the proper inclusion of disabled children in mainstream Catholic schools, many mainstream non-religious schools practice the full inclusion model. Put differently, non-Christian schools are already practicing the values which Catholic schools should be the ones serving as leading lights. In addition, this supposedly different practice is standard practice in many countries all over the world. However, mainstream Catholic schools in the UK would rather not embed these core Christian values in their practices. Reasons in my findings tend to point to managerial performance issues and league table positions being given priority. This is over and above the Christian values that should be embedded in practice as well as in the children's best interests. Put in another way, It is more about the Catholic school brand in UK schools. In my respectful opinion, there appear to be an inability to understand that Christianity and Catholicism are ways of life, which should be blended with practice. 
not some social practices that should be observed in isolation when convenient. Dear Holy Father, may I politely ask, 1. What resources and competences exist in non-faith mainstream schools in the UK for children with disabilities, which Catholic schools have found impossible to acquire nearly 30 years after the Disability Discrimination Act 1995? 2. Why are Catholic schools going to send tribunal nearly 30 years after the Disability Discrimination Act 1995 to argue against Catholic children with disabilities attending, rather than use the funds, time, goodwill of parents and other resources on educating those same children? Conclusion 2 Corinthians 4.17.18 says for our momentary light, affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So, we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. On this basis, I am strongly and respectfully of the view that many Catholic schools are focused on what is seen, rather than what is unseen. Their conduct in the context of this letter is not only antithetical to Christian and Catholic values, it violates the body of Christ. Dear Holy Father, once again, please tear down the brand and kindly use your good office to change the Catholic schools to honour the body of Christ in truth, spirit and in practice. Their conduct should be consistent with the values of our Lord and Saviour, Christ Jesus. Best wishes, Jude Dunkwu, I Rise campaign.